One thing the garden teaches is the growing never ends. Marilyn Simons is a gregarious, gung-ho gardener who this time of year suffers from plant starvation. She spends a lot of time dreaming about spring when she can once again dig pot and plant. Marilyn is a writer and award-winning author who has a love affair with plants, her beloved husband too, and her Ontario acreage called The Leaf. Her new book of essays is called A New Leaf, Growing With My Garden. It is my pleasure to welcome Marilyn Simons back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Hello. So from convict lovers, writing about convict lovers to your very own special spot. Yes, yes. It's uh, Well, you know, and I, I didn't really intend to write a book about it. I started with a website and writing, uh, you know, sort of, they weren't really blogs. It was more polished than a blog, mm -hmm. but these short pieces about about the garden and um, and an editor at Doubleday was one of my regular readers and wrote and said I think this should be a book so it, it's it's all that more pleasurable as a book because it, it sort of mm -hmm. comes without that angst and you know the, the, <laughs> the big book worry um, I, I, I love these pieces well I love my garden Gardeners love their gardens, right? They do, yeah. and uh, they want to spend so much time in their gardens too, no matter what the weather. Yes, well, not. It, I was I was thinking about this earlier that I don't know if I would do well as a Vancouver gardener because you don't ever get a rest, right? I would be out mm. there year round, whereas in Ontario, most years, not this year, but most years, the snow forces us inside. Sure. So we have that, that kind of stepping back, com mm -hmm. contemplative moment when you think, oh, I could do this, and I could do this, and I could do this, <laughs> right. and you, you thumb through car, you know, the, the, uh, the plant catalogs to get yes, your fix. Yes, of course you do, and you try not to order every lily, but it's very tempting to order every new lily. Well, of course you do. Or <laughs> every new hosta. And out here, however, you can put a hosta in the ground and it grows forever. It's true. I mm -hmm. envy you. I'm sure you do. So who got you into this? Why did you get into gardening? Oh, I've been gardening for as long as I can remember. Mm. The very first photograph of me is I'm three and I'm standing in my grandmother's gardening garden watering with this, with this watering can that is about as big as I am. I, I don't ever remember not gardening. So, you know, my, my grandma, I lived in a little town. The town was, you know, this village was populated by all my relatives, and uh, so I was always in my grandmother's garden, mm. my aunt's gardens. My own mother did not have a green thumb, but I, I think I mostly learned from my, my great aunt Mabel, who um, I lived with her one summer when I was about 12, 13, and she kind of taught me all the basics. Lived with her in Canada? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you moved to Brazil. We did. We did. I grew up in, you know, sort of my middle years in mm. Brazil. Which Talk I think, about botanicals. Yeah. Lush, well, it is, exotic. you know, and it's an environment I keep trying to recreate, I think, in my garden. I, you know, I have oleanders grow wild there. Well, mm. I have oleanders, big, like, you know, five foot trees that I bring into the mm. house in the winter and then plant right out in the soil again in the summer so I can pretend that they actually live there year round. And does, uh, does, do, does you? <laughs> <laughs> I sure does. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, do you have a motto? Uh, a life motto? Something I read that you, I that do. you do. Never work harder than you have to. Live as gloriously as you can. Mm, it's such a good motto. It is a great motto, and I wish I could, you know, sort of keep up with it as much mm -hmm. as I would like, but you know, I, I, my beloved, my husband would, who's called my beloved, people aren't named in here, but the, the book is stories, right, about the yes. people in my life as well mm -hmm. as the gardens and the things that they, they, they prompt. But, I mean, my garden, my husband would not call me a lazy gardener, but I am a lazy gardener. I want to enjoy the garden, so I have developed techniques that mean I don't have to work any harder than I have to. And your husband is a gardener too, avid gardener too. He's also yeah. an avid writer and he a is. great writer too. So when you're not in the in the garden or uh, eating hot cross buns, <laughs> 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 you're writing. That's right. Uh, now, uh, an ideal garden for you. First of all, take me to the leaf. Why is it called the leaf? It's called the leaf because we live on Upper Oak Leaf Road, 
Mm. So uh, we just started referring to the property as the leaf. You know, the kids, you're coming out to the leaf this weekend, you know, that, that sort of thing. So that it's it kind of stuck. And when we moved there, it's, a, it's a, an old property. We're only the fifth family that's owned this house, and the house was built in 1824. So it's, it's, a, it's an old part of Ontario mm. where the Loyalists first came. It's beautiful. And when we moved uh, into the house, there was about two acres cleared, and the rest is bush. Um, and, and the guy, the, the, the couple that lived there, the guy loved to mow grass, and so it was two acres of grass. And I mean, we did it, the first time we did it, it took 10 hours to mow the lawn. And I said, not going to be doing that very often. <laughs> 10 hours? I know. Guys love grass, you know, mm -hmm. girls not it's so true. much. So, All kinds of grass. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we won't Well, go no. Anyway, uh, so I started making gardens. And mm -hmm. with the gardens take as much work as a lawn, but, you know, you don't have to have the big machinery. They're not smelly, right? You don't True. have to have that internal combustion engine going all the time. So so we ended up, now we have 26 garden 26 beds. 26 garden beds. Yes, and, and the... Vegetables, oh, flowers, everything. everything. Um, winter vegetables, summer vegetables. The biggest one is... Uh, about 40 by 160 feet. So, you know, it's as bigger than many building lots in, in mm. the city. Mm -hmm. um, and they, you know, they all do something slightly different. We, we grow, we have a little orchard, we grow all our own fruit and vegetables and we eat from the garden, but also, you know, big peony beds and rose beds and mm. um, shrubberies and and I, I never had a swath like this to work with, right? And it, it's like suddenly after painting miniatures all your life, you know, being given this, this wall-sized canvas, it's, it's quite wonderful. And it, it is the artist in you, really, who brings out the, uh, the tiny blossoms and the, and the giant cabbage, I know this, or the blue carrots. Yeah, well, and, and it, it, it is. I, I think one of the impulses to garden is a really creative impulse. Mm -hmm. You know, you're always arranging plants for the aesthetic, right? And, and, and not, only, not, not only a still life aesthetic, but it's an aesthetic that changes over the seasons and changes over the years as the plants grow and develop. So it's, it's this bizarre kind of three-dimensional, mm. ever-changing sculpture. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, you write about hollyhocks. Yes, hollyhocks. Uh, that's one of the essays, hollyhocks. Did you ever make hollyhock dolls when you I were didn't. little? No. You didn't? Maybe that's why I'm not so keen on hollyhocks. I think Tell it is. Tell me about hollyhock dolls. Hollyhock dolls, well, you know how they're shaped. So yeah, you, yeah. The, you turn one over like this, you put a toothpick up. Yeah. And then you t put the other part like this, and then you stick another toothpick in, and you put the little hollyhock the, the bud little as bud. the head, and yeah. you float them in the bathtub. Oh my goodness! Okay, I excuse me, I have to leave now. And <laughs> I think so to make the hollyhock doll. Oh, that's but wonderful! Not your favorite. I can feel another essay coming. No, for hollyhocks. the grand girls, perhaps. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah. in your garden, you have uh, many helpers. I know. I do. You have a gnome. <laughs> what, what, what made you buy a gnome? Well, I've, you know, ever since I saw the movie Emily, I have, I've mm. been kind of in love with gnomes. And uh, so when I was in Germany on a book tour a few years ago, I kind of, you know, German gnomes, they kind of go together. Mm. I thought I, it would be easy, and I couldn't find one anywhere. I mean, it, was, it, it became this sort of odd little quest, which I, I write about in the book. And I finally found one, and I wanted it in my garden because I grow in the spring a lot of miniature, right? Mm. And they're, they're, they're called smalls. The British call them smalls. Mm -hmm. And, you know, little, little miniature daffodils and, and little miniature tulips and, of course, the crocuses and the scylla. And so I thought, well, it would be perfect to have a gnome in there and then it, it would be sort of the right, the right size for that okay, landscape. Okay, in, in among the smalls. Yes. And uh, the scylla, isn't that a monster or something? Isn't the scylla mean monster? Well, yes, Cherubus and scylla is, is, scylla, uh, scylla. is from uh, the Odyssey, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why it's, it's called that. The grand girls, who are my lovely granddaughters, um, you know, sort of thought, well, maybe it's because their heads grow, you know, the scylla stems grow really tall, and scylla mm -hmm. is, is a monster with a really, really long neck. Um, but who knows? Who knows? But, who knows? but it, it, it kind of raises this thing that mm -hmm. the garden, even the names, are full mm -hmm. of history, and, and mm -hmm. that's one of the things I explore in, the, in, in, these, in these stories. Sure, are, are and you make a very good point in one story, that uh, if you go to the nursery, 
yeah. where the plants are coddled. Yes. And you think you can take those <laughs> seeds home or plants home and, and have them look the same in your garden. Not yes. necessarily so because they're sort of the Paris Hiltons yes. of the plant world. It's true, yes, I, I do use that very phrase. They are mm -hmm. the Paris Hiltons. And then there are the other plants that are in the nursery that really should come with, uh, with warning signs on them, right? Beware home invaders, right? Because, you know, you get this innocent little plant, take it home, it's called Creeping Jenny. You think, oh, isn't that cute? It's so pretty. Mm -hmm. And then you put it in your garden, and before you know it, there's all other plants have been obliterated <laughs> under the blanket of Creeping Jenny. And Jenny so there is a Creeping Jenny. There is a Creeping Jenny. Jenny does creep. Jenny does, there's and also, she never stops. Uh, you write about this because I know you read voraciously and, and books. Uh, Elizabeth Lawrence wrote a book about, uh, I think, little things. Yeah, the smalls. Yeah, the she smalls. Did. And she was also in a correspondence. The little bulbs. The little bulbs, yeah. And she was in a correspondence with Catherine White, E.B. White's mm -hmm. wife. And it, it's, a, it's a marvelous, um, it's a marvelous back and forth between a garden in New England and a garden in, mm -hmm. in the American South. And it's, the, the conversation is wonderful because it, it kind of shows up who we are as gardeners. And I talk about, you know, this, this is sort of a central thing I keep coming back to in these essays. The way gardening is, yes, our impulse towards nature, but it also shows up this, this very awful characteristic in, in humans, which is that desire to manipulate and, and make mm -hmm. things according to what we want, you know, mm. so that I'm constantly trying to grow plants that would far rather, you know, my magnolias, which right. don't really want to live in eastern Ontario. They no. would like to be in Georgia. Thank you very much. Yes, or yeah. we have some here, the tulip magnolia. We have yes. a tulip magnolia oh, here. Oh, see, I, yeah, we, we mm. can't do that. We, the best I can do is a star magnolia. Well, we do it with animals, yeah. too. We try to make the Disney dog, yes. you know, <laughs> the, the Labradoodle <laughs> Disney dog with yeah. the perfect eyes yeah. and all of that. Yeah. And we manipulate yeah. plants like crazy. Yeah. Hence, we've lost some scent. Oh, we have. And mm. are you thinking of the August lily? Yes, and yes. let's take a break. And when we come back, tell me about the August lily Will and do. night scent and what really makes a garden so fab. Mm -hmm. A new leaf growing with my garden. Marilyn Simons, our guest, will return.